Yo quiero que lo que sea una, uh, sí, check on them, say, okay, we have no emergency exit. That's it, but okay, we can stop, we're not here, and on the side, there's a lot of drawing. Thank you. Today's processional begins with the candidates for the doctoral degree accompanied by their department chairs and faculty mentors. The stage party is being led by the Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost Dr. Robert Jones.
Please stand for our national anthem performed by Kevin Arnold, graduating senior in performing arts. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave? O'er the land of the free and the Please be seated. I hereby open Clemson University's doctoral hooding ceremony. And I now invite Dr. John Lopes, Dean of the Graduate School, to the podium. Thank you, Provost Jones. Good afternoon. Well, we can do better than that. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. So our first speaker is one of the students graduating with us this afternoon. We're always looking for ways to put our students at the center of everything we do. So each semester, we oversee a process in which a group of graduate students and postdoc scholars select a graduating doctoral student to address their fellow graduates. Today, I'm honored to introduce soon-to-be Dr. Jamika N. Jackson, who has completed her PhD in Educational and Organizational Leadership Development. Jamika. Good afternoon. When I received the nomination to serve as a speaker for the hooding ceremony today, I have to be completely transparent that I was both honored and terrified, to say the least. On one hand, I recognize it was and is an absolute privilege to be standing here in front of you with the shiny new doctoral degree in educational and organizational leadership development, a few years of research skills that I'm overly anxious to incorporate, and enough knowledge about my dissertation topic to either be dangerous at least or consider an expert on the subject matter at best. Even so, I struggled with the message that I might be able to stand up here and relay to motivate a room full of now experts in their fields. Up until a few weeks ago when I visited the graduate school site, I was looking for a distraction from tirelessly preparing for my defense, if we're being honest. I had no clue what to say to you today. But then I saw the tagline, Transformation Begins Here, on the website's main page, and it spoke to me. I asked myself, how have you been transformed by this doctoral journey, and how do you plan to use the knowledge and skills you have obtained to, in some way, transform this world that so desperately needs change? A transformation is obviously a dramatic change in function or form. So I methodically began to think through when my own dramatic change may have begun. Now, I've had many inspiring moments throughout my doctoral journey, but none more motivational than an instance of self-reflection I remember having just as I had finished collecting data for my research study. I would always visit Reedy Falls Park in downtown Greenville as I was writing my dissertation, 
either as a much needed distraction or as a desperate search for motivation, depending on the day. On this particular day, I can remember struggling with being encouraged and not wanting to continue writing, as I'm sure many of us have experienced. I was elated to have just wrapped up listening to the amazing, um, amazing stories and experiences of 15 black women detailing their leadership progression through higher education. And then reality struck. The fun part was abruptly over. What do I do now? I dared not call my advisor to whine about my lack of motivation. I had already learned that much. So instead, I sat, sat there for a couple hours, frustrated and with nothing more to add than what I, what, when I had first arrived, suddenly seeing this beautiful butterfly on the bench next to me. In slow motion, the butterfly slowly spread its wings back and forth, seemingly allowing me to not only bask in its splendor, but to give me the opportunity to wonder what had undergone to have arrived at this level of beauty, at this level of drastic change in form. As I continued to welcome the pleasant distraction of this beautiful creature, I began to think about how this butterfly's progression to magnificence may not have been too different from my own doctoral journey. Yes, it was overwhelmingly attractive, but what had it endured to get to this point? It typically takes a butterfly anywhere from nine to 14 days to complete metamorphosis, a time in which they are forced to endure significant change and possibly difficulties to arrive to a point where we can physically, and in my case, intellectually benefit from their beauty, from their transformation. As I sat there, initially feeling discouraged and ready to call it quits, I recognized that in that moment, the butterfly unknowingly had given me some hope, some encouragement, that this long, difficult journey, this transformation that I had embarked upon years ago was less about me wanting to add this major accomplishment to my repertoire of accolades and more about me finishing this sometimes daunting and overwhelming goal, excuse me, and more about how finishing this sometimes daunting and overwhelming goal could in turn benefit others more than it would personally benefit me. From that moment, I was able to push through the final two chapters of my work, sometimes wanting to give up, but nevertheless understanding the genuine value that completing this academic journey may have for other people, for other groups, and for improving other circumstances. It was in this moment that I realized that my personal and academic transformation had begun during graduate school, but would not end in this same context. Maya Angelou, the brilliant poet, memoirist, and civil rights activist, declared that we delight in the beauty of the butterfly, but rarely admit the change it has gone through to achieve that beauty. So what I offer to you today, as we sit here waving the wings of our new doctoral degrees, that we all take a moment to delight in our own metamorphoses and consider that, tra and consider that transformation really does begin here. I beg of you to not only consider how you have been transformed by this journey, but more importantly, contemplate how you plan to use the knowledge and skills you have obtained to, in some way, transform this world that desperately needs a metamorphosis of its own. And remember that transformation begins here, but it certainly does not end here. Thank you all for allowing me to speak to you today. Congratulations on this major accomplishment, and I look forward to witnessing all that you're able to transform after this journey. Go Tigers. Well, thank you, Jamika, for your thoughtful and inspiring comments. You're absolutely correct. Transformation begins at Clemson, but it will not end here. So let me now introduce our stage party. I'd like to ask each of them to stand as their name is called. First, I'm delighted to acknowledge Kim Wilkerson, chairperson of the Clemson University Board of Trustees. Please help me thank her for her leadership. We also have with us executive officers, deans, and special guests. As I read each of your names, please stand and remain standing so that we can acknowledge you. I ask the audience, please hold your applause until I introduce everyone. Dr. James P. P. Clements, President of Clemson University. Dr. Robert Jones, Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost. Dr. Lee Gill, Chief Diversity Officer and Special Assistant to the President for Inclusive Excellence. Dr. Chris Miller, Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students. Dr. Paula Agudelo, Associate Dean, College of Agriculture, Forestry, and Life Sciences. 
Dr. Michael LeMayhew, Associate Dean, College of Architecture, Arts, and Humanities. Dr. Rachel Mayo, Associate Dean in the College of Behavioral, Social, and Health Sciences. Dr. Carl Hollingsworth, Associate Dean in the College of Business. Dr. Jeff Marshall, Associate Dean in the College of Education. Dr. Melissa Smith, Associate Dean in the College of Engineering, Computing, and Applied Sciences. Dr. Steve Krager, Associate Dean in the College of Science. Dr. Natasha Kroom, Associate Dean in the Graduate School. Dr. Brian Dominey, Associate Dean in the Graduate School. Dr. Tia Dumas, Associate Vice President for Strategic Alliances. Dr. William Farrell, Associate Dean in the Graduate School. Dr. Kimberly Poole, Asso Assistant Vice President in the Division of Student Affairs. Dr. Sue Wharton, our Director of the Academic Success Center. <clears throat> Dr. Thompson Mefford, President of the Faculty Senate. And Ms. C.J. Smith, President of the Staff Senate. Please join me in thanking them for their service and leadership. I'm delighted to welcome all of you to our December 2021 doctoral hooding ceremony, including the many students, family, and friends who are watching the live stream of today's event. We are so glad that you can join us for this special celebration. We're here to celebrate your amazing accomplishment. <clears throat> I do want to ask you to indulge me. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. I do want to ask you to indulge me for one minute to acknowledge a person who made so many contributions to the success of graduate students at Clemson University, including many of you graduating today, no doubt. Dr. Tia Dumas has served as associate dean in the graduate school for five years and has made many contributions to the advancement of graduate education at Clemson. I will highlight one very notable example of many contributions. Dr. D, as most of you know her, created an extraordinary holistic professional development program from scratch. Grad360 has been copied by other institutions and is a point of pride for Clemson University. Dr. D is a rare individual, a combination of knowledge, wisdom, dedication, passion, compassion, and altruism, and a model of dignity and integrity. She has recently taken on a new role at Clemson as Associate Vice President for Strategic Alliances. Please join me in thanking Dr. Tia Dumas for her service to the Graduate School and wish her well in her new role. This ceremony highlights the critical role of faculty mentors and department chairs, each of whom spent countless hours working to help you get here today. Without them, none of us would be here today. Please help me thank them for their excellent and tireless work. So one of the best aspects of working in academia is that we all get to be a part of some of the happiest and most important days of your lives, including now, when you get to be of a certain age, folks expect words of wisdom. And as you can probably tell, I'm of a certain age. And this is my attempt at some words of wisdom. I'll share with you two observations that have uh, served me well. When I earned my PhD from another outstanding institution in, in South Carolina, I did have some apprehensions about moving on to the next step in my career. In my field of genetics, we do what's called the postdoc. That's typically a four-year uh, period developing an independent research program. And I was fortunate to secure a position in a top laboratory at a prestigious private institution. Most of the postdocs at that institution came from Ivy League schools, and I did worry that I would not measure up. The truth is that I've had that same feeling at every transition of my career, and yet, I always continue to take on, to choose to take on new challenges. The drive to take on new challenges holds true for the people up here on stage and those surrounding you. And so why do we choose the most challenging paths, even though, even when we have reservations or concerns? The simple answer is that the, it is an essential part of who we are as scholars. You've been deliberately prepared for whatever comes next. 
And if you were not ready, I can promise you, your advisor and your committee would not let you go. If you need any further evidence of this, just think of the uncharted waters that you navigated over the last year and a half. So I assure you, you're ready for whatever comes next. And I urge you to pursue challenges without reservations. The second thing I would convey is embodied in a conversation I once had with President Clemens. I asked him how he became a president at such an unusually young age. His answer was very simple. He noted that he had a lot of support from a lot of people along the way. Now, this is a really important point to remember because we associate doctoral degrees with independence. But this does not mean that you will walk alone. You've built an important network of support at Clemson that will be with you forever. I urge you to continue to grow your network and most importantly, seek and embrace that support. I promise you, it will serve you well. And remember that the best way to show gratitude for the support received is to pay it forward. In closing, I want you to know how very happy we are that your journey took you through Clemson University. Remember that the transformation began at Clemson but will not end here. Please stay in touch. We look forward to hearing about your future successes. My heartfelt congratulations, and go Tigers! So it's now my great pleasure to again introduce our Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost of Clemson University and just about the nicest guy you'll ever meet, Dr. Robert H. Jones. Thank you very much, Dr. Lopes. And hello, everybody. I'm really, really pleased to join you at this very special event. And I'm going to cover a couple of housekeeping items for all of you who are about to walk up on stage here. Uh, with a few exceptions, our graduates will be hooded by their major advisor and by either their department chair, the associate dean of the, of the graduate school, or another faculty member from the student's academic department. Each graduate will come up over here onto the stage and then stand as the doctoral hood is placed over their shoulders. And there's a spot right there that says, please stand here <laughs> with footmarks. So it's really clear and you get a good photograph there. Then the graduates will cross the stage right here and receive a commemorative pin from President Clements. Now, I'd like to share just a few perspectives on major advisors. For doctoral students, especially those earning a PhD, the major advisor is an accomplished faculty member of great importance. Together, the advisor and the student spend many hours creating new knowledge and sharing it with the academic community and with the public. As you can imagine, their relationship is very, very strong, and it's at the core of the student's doctoral <coughs> education. And it's often the student's most important starting point for a career. For all doctoral students, several faculty, in addition to the major advisor, also provide significant advice and guidance. It really takes a village to support each of the graduates who are here today. Clemson University is grateful for the efforts of our faculty advisors and proud of the successes of them and our doctoral students and how, what they have achieved together. And now, it is my honor to introduce a strong advocate for graduate education and for faculty, a wonderful individual to work with, a national leader in higher education, and fortunately for us, the president of Clemson University, Dr. James P. Clements, who will officially confer today's degrees. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Jones, and thank you for the incredible job you are doing as our Executive Vice President and Provost. Would you all please help me thank Dr. Jones for his leadership? Good afternoon. Go Tigers. I'm honored to be with you on this very special day. Let me just start by saying I'm incredibly proud of all who are graduating today. 
and want to officially welcome you to our doctoral hooding ceremony. Look, we all know that we faced many challenges over the past year and a half, challenges that we have never encountered before, but you persevered, you stayed focused, and you didn't give up, and you made it to the finish line. Today, we celebrate your hard work and your incredible accomplishments and the value and the importance of graduate education at Clemson. Today, we recognize the contributions that you have made through your research that is driving innovation and generating new ideas and expanding the knowledge base of Clemson and the world. As you know, as you very well know, doctoral education is a very lengthy, very challenging, and very demanding process, but you did it. You made it, and you did, as John said, you had a lot of help along the way and a lot of support along the way. So let's take a moment to recognize the family members and friends who nurtured you and who supported you and who helped in some ways to make this day possible. To all of those moms and dads and spouses and grandparents and children and siblings and aunts and uncles and friends who are here with you, you honor us this day and these graduates with your presence. Also want to recognize and thank our incredible and talented faculty and dedicated staff whose commitment to excellence helped to ensure your success here at Clemson. Would you please help me thank them and all of their colleagues. Also, like with, I'd like to extend my congratulations to any faculty or staff members who are, have furthered their education and who are receiving their doctoral degrees today. In preparing for the ceremony today, I thought back about my own academic experience. I was a first-generation college student, and I remember my elementary school teachers calling me professor because I was a very serious student and I wanted to help others learn the subject matter. I remember my first day as an undergraduate student sitting in the classroom listening to my professor knowing that was exactly what I wanted to be. That was and still is my dream job. But little did I know at that time just how much effort and how much hard work it would take to qualify for my dream job. And I remember one of the most important lessons I learned from my parents and that was the importance of a college education. My parents didn't have the opportunity to attend college due to financial constraints, but they did instill in me and my three older siblings the value of a college education. They urged us to be passionate about the transformational, life-changing power of education. We were the first generation in my family to go to college. And we were taught that education was the path to a better future, not just for an individual, but for society as a whole. And we listened. Between me and my three older siblings, we actually earned 11 college degrees, including seven graduate degrees, as well as one honorary doctorate. And I believe that one of the proudest days for my parents was the day that my brother and I both received our PhDs side by side on stage. I hope today is equally as memorable and special for you. Unfortunately, a member of your graduating class passed away. Today, the PhD in bioengineering is awarded posthumously to Melissa A. McCullough. Would you please bow your heads and observe a moment of silence in her memory? Accepting the degree on her behalf today will be Tim and Jason, her father and her brother. I would now like to ask the candidates for the doctoral degree to please stand.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is my immense pleasure to present to you the doctoral class of 2021. By the power and authority vested in me by the Clemson University Board of Trustees, I now confer upon you the doctoral degree with all of the rights and privileges appertaining thereto, and as testimony thereof, I present you with a doctorate from the university. Congratulations. You may be seated. You'll please come forward with your major advisor or designee. Agriculture, Forestry, and Life Sciences. Dr. Jeffrey Allen Bowles. Dr. Wan Fang Wu. <laughs> Dr. Bupinder Singh Jatana. Dr. Jeremy S. Dertin. <laughs> Dr. Bradley Paul Wilkinson. College of Architecture, Arts, and Humanities. Dr. Suda Dai. Dr. Chelsea Megan Slack. College of Behavioral, Social, and Health Sciences. Dr. Smith Foster Hevner.
Dr. Megan Delaney McCoy. Dr. Ludmila Tsikalava. <laughs> Dr. Jamie Lynn Cathy. Dr. Yan Chao Lee, College of Business. Dr. Takara Alana Hart. Dr. Tiffany Aaron Webb Osborne. Dr. Lori B. Corley. Dr. Jamika N. Jackson. <laughs> Dr. Eric T. Pernado. Dr. Althea Leslie Richardson. College of Engineering, Computing, and Applied Sciences, Dr. Sean Jeffrey Moser. <laughs> Dr. Sai Aditya Pradeep. Dr. Do Hyun Daniel Doon, Yoon. <laughs> Dr.
Dr. Elizabeth Elaine Giannino. Dr. Melissa A. McCullough, accepting the degree on her behalf are her father, Tim McCullough, and her brother, Jason McCullough. Dr. Craig LaVar Miller. <laughs> Dr. Timothy M. Samick, Jr. Dr. Eileen Wei. <laughs> Dr. Maxwell Hilbert. Dr. Serene Akram Majdalawiye. <laughs> Dr. Pei Huang. Dr. Zhu Lin. <laughs> Dr. Benjamin Thomas Sherman Sheely. Dr. Farah Mahmoud Al Shanik. <laughs> Dr. Jason William Anderson. Dr. Robert Raymond Underwood. Thank you. Dr. Hu Fong Huang.
Dr. Baker Andrew Martin. Dr. Megan Elaine Fowler. <laughs> Dr. Divine Maloney. Dr. Lin Yu Pan. <laughs> Dr. Priyanka Balkrishna Bovid. Dr. Anmol Kotari. <laughs> Dr. Saiful Islam Tamim. College of Science, Dr. Jessica Ann Jones. <laughs> Dr. Amina Katoon. Dr. Stephanie Barbara LaPlaca. <laughs> Dr. Sneha Mokashi. Dr. Pubudu Lakmal Wijasiri Jaya Sekara Merinchige. Loud round of applause for our newest <laughs> doctoral students.
Congratulations again to all of you. It's truly an honor for me to be a part of this very special moment and change and milestone in your life. I know that you will make us proud. And more importantly, I know that you will make a difference in the world. I hope that your Clemson experience has been everything that you hoped it would be, and that we instilled in you the core values that we hold so dear, honesty, integrity, and respect. I hope that we challenged you and that we inspired you to think critically and to be engaged with your community and the world. And you just earned your doctorate from our Carnegie Tier One Research Institution, a very prestigious group of universities in the United States classified as having the very highest level of research. You leave this university with exceptional academic credentials, and I encourage you to use your talents and your education to make a positive difference. Some of you, some of you earned your undergraduate or your master's at Clemson, and you already know that a Clemson degree is highly regarded around the globe. And you know that the Clemson family is very special and very real. For those of you who earned your prestigious degree at another institution or your previous degree at another institution, today you become a Clemson alumnus and you join a family with approximately 170,000 members around the world. All of you are forever connected to this great university and to this community of scholars and to every member of the Clemson family. I challenge you to make sure your life matters. And I ask you to use the incredible knowledge that you gained and the research that you have performed to make a positive impact on others. Congratulations again. I'm so incredibly proud of you, and go Tigers. Will you please stand and join in singing the Clemson alma mater? The words are printed on the last page of your program. And please remain standing for the recessional of the stage party, followed by the graduates. You are dismissed after the graduates exit the auditorium.